Hi, I'm Doug, and in this video I'll be providing an introduction to the HyperDeck control protocol. So HyperDeck is a range of disk-based video recorder and playback devices from Blackmagic Design. It can be used in areas where traditionally you may have used a VTR broadcast deck, such as the one shown in this slide. And for comparison, there's a HyperDeck Studio Mini sitting on top of the tape deck in that picture. So as a developer, some of the applications may, where you may choose to use a HyperDeck include uses such as advanced digital signage, a live replay station for sports, or a media pool for live production. So there are several models of HyperDeck that support the protocol that I'll be describing, including the HyperDeck Studio and the HyperDeck Studio Mini. So if you look at the back of a HyperDeck, there are two ports that can be used for control. There's the remote port, which is the same port that you find on the back of a VTR broadcast deck. So you can use that for basic transport control, such as recording, playing, performing a jog or shuttle. But it's very much a time code based protocol. So you can seek to a clip, but you do so by jumping to that clip's starting time code. There's also an Ethernet port. Um, and there are two services that are provided over that Ethernet port. One is an FTP server, and you can use that to upload clips remotely to a HyperDeck or to download clips that you've, re you've recorded onto the HyperDeck. And the Ethernet port also runs the Blackmagic HyperDeck protocol that I'll be describing. The Blackmagic HyperDeck protocol is a TCP service, so it runs on port 9993, and it's a text-based protocol. So the beauty of a text-based protocol is that you can just open up a Telnet connection, connect to a HyperDeck, and just type the commands that I'll be showing over the next few slides. And that way you can interactively explore the protocol, play with the HyperDeck, and see how it responds. So the types of operations that you can perform over the Ethernet protocol are basic transport control, such as playing, a stop, recording, jog or shuttle. You can configure the HyperDeck, such as setting the video output standard, changing the recording codec, switching the disk that the HyperDeck will record to or play from, and you can query the deck state, including retrieving a list of the clips that are available for playback, including metadata such as the clip's name, the clip's duration, its starting time code. And you can also perform advanced operations such as building a timeline from the clips on disk. So as I mentioned, it's a text-based protocol. So I want to go through the three command formats that you'll use. The most basic command is a simple command where you just provide the name of the operation that you want the HyperDeck to perform. And the HyperDeck will respond by sending an acknowledgement to tell us that it has received the command and it has acted on it. Now, you notice there are two parts of the response that the HyperDeck sends back. The first is an integer value, and that's an inter integer value that you can look for in your code just to confirm that the HyperDeck has accepted the command. And the second part of the response is a string description. Um, and that's really just included for the benefit of the developer to provide a human readable description of what the uh, HyperDeck is sending back. The uh, second type of command is a command that takes parameters. And in this case, we're going to send a multi-line command to the HyperDeck. The difference between a simple command and a command that takes parameters is if I want to provide additional parameters with the command, you'll notice there's a colon at the end of the command name. Um, and so following that, the subsequent lines of the command contain the parameters and the, and the corresponding value they want to specify for each parameter. And again, when the HyperDeck receives that command, it will respond by sending back an acknowledgement to tell me that it's accepted that command and has acted on it. Now, there are some commands where the HyperDeck is going to send us back data. And in that case, the HyperDeck is going to send us more than just a simple acknowledgement. It's going to send us a multi-line response. And so for these command formats, we send the command to the HyperDeck, and the HyperDeck responds with a multi-line response. The first line is an acknowledgement to tell us that it's accepted our command and it's about to send back the data. And the subsequent lines of the response contain the data that we've requested. So let's go through some concrete examples. An example of a simple command is the stop command. So if I just send stop to a HyperDeck, it will stop the current operation that's performing and send back an acknowledgement to tell me that it's acted on that uh, command. An example of a command with parameters is the play command. 
Um, now, if I tell the hyperdeck to play, I can optionally specify a playback speed. So in this case, I'm setting play with a speed. So you'll notice there's a colon at the end of the play command because I want to specify a parameter. And the parameter I'm specifying is speed. Um, now, to play at half speed or 50% speed, I spend, send a speed parameter of 50. And when the hyperdeck receives that command, it sends back the acknowledgement 200 OK to tell me that it's acted on that uh, command. Um, an example of a command where the hyperdeck is sending back a multi-line response is the query configuration command. So if I send the configuration command, the hyperdeck will respond by uh, describing its current video and audio input um, connections. So for example here, I've sent the configuration command, and the hyperdeck will send back a multi-line response. Um, in this example, it's telling me that it's recording from its SDI video input, and it's telling me that the audio input that it's recording comes from the embedded audio contained within that SDI feed. And now I'd like to jump to a demonstration. So we've written a simple Python application that connects to a hyperdeck over the Ethernet port and starts a web server so that anyone on the network can open a web browser and can control the hyperdeck. So let me go ahead and run that application. So I just specify the IP address of the hyperdeck that I want to connect to. As you can see that the Python application has connected to the hyperdeck and has started the web server. So if I now open a web browser, I can connect to that Python application and I can now control the hyperdeck. So while I'm running through this demo, I want you to keep an eye on the two boxes on the right hand side of the web page. The top box will show you the command that I've sent to the hyperdeck and the bottom box will show you the response that the hyperdeck sent back. So the first thing I want you to note is that we're showing the hyperdeck state. So we're saying that the hyperdeck has stopped and we have a time code. So to obtain that, um, that status, we sent the transport info command to the hyperdeck. And the hyperdeck responded by sending its current status. So here it's showing that the hyperdeck has stopped. It's not playing. So that's why its playback speed is 0. Um, it provides the time code of the frame on which the hyperdeck is currently displaying. And it's saying that the video output standard is 4K P24. You'll notice that we also have a list of the available clips for playback. And to build that clip list, we sent the clips get command. And in response, the hyperdeck sent back a playlist of all the clips on disk, including the clip name, the time code of each clip, and the duration of each clip. And so as I select between clips, you'll see that the hyperdeck is seeking to that clip and that's performed by sending the go to clip ID command. So I can play a clip, I can adjust the playback speed, and all of this is being controlled by the Hyperdeck Ethernet protocol. So the Hyperdeck Ethernet protocol is completely documented in the Hyperdeck manual. So I'd encourage you to download the manual and have a look through the, um, the commands to find out what the um, protocol is capable of doing. Um, we also have a developer support website, which is linked off the main Blackmagic website. We have support forums for developers, and we have a developer support email address. Thank you for watching.